Hello everyone. Today's topic would be enterprise structure. Enterprise structure is used for defining the company's operation structure into the SAP instance. An SAP instance is a copy of the SAP application installed in one physical server. So the application that you are using in your company will be normally called as a SAP instance. Now the operation structure of a company is dependent on the kind of business activities carried out in a company. Usually companies can be divided into three groups based on the type of activities carried out. So you have companies that have manufacturing processes, companies that have trading processes, or companies that do services processes. So based on these types of activities carried out, companies, the internal structure of the company is going to be defined. And based on that structure required for carrying out business activities, the enterprise structure of a company is going to be defined in the SAP system. Now, just like a company has different verticals or processes in order to achieve the objective, the operational structure of a company is also different for each process. Just like that, the in the SAP application also, each of the components are used for carrying out activities for a specific process and the structure required for carrying out the activities in the SAP application is also going to be dependent on the real-time processes. So the structure required for MM related activities looks something like this. At the very top you have a company or client. Below that you have an element called company code. Then below that you have the plant and below that you have a storage location. And depending on the level at which the elements are maintained, you'll also have additionally purchasing organization, valuation area or level and controlling area. Now let's understand these each of these elements, the definitions of these elements, so that you understand what each of these elements are all about. So the company or client is the highest level of the enterprise structure. However, even though it is the highest level, there is no business or financial activity carried out at this level. This is more like a element holding all the company codes under it together. So in the SAP instance, every element, whatever be the nature of its use, but if you are going to use anything in the SAP system, then it has to be identified with a code or a number. So similarly, this company or client will be identified with a one to six character alphanumeric code. Alphanumeric code meaning made up of both numbers, alphabet, or a combination of alphabet and numbers, right? The next element is company code. Company code can be defined as the level from where all the business or financial activities are carried out. In the SAP system, it is also defined as the level where the books of accounts are maintained. Now books of accounts indicate the balance sheets, profit and loss statements, audit statements and all those financial records. The level at which these books of accounts are maintained in the SAP system is what we call as a company code. Now you may be wondering what is the difference between a company or client and a company code. Let's take an example. The Valent group, the parent company is what we call as the company or client. And in each country, the operations which are carried out will be called as the company code. So each country's operations which are handled by a specific entity, that's what we call as a company code. The parent company which controls the overall organizational process or the operations or the activities is what we call as a company or client. So any company that operates in multi countries, the parent company which governs the overall process, the overall direction, defines the direction is what we call as a company or client. And in each country, the operations, the structure is what we call as the company code. Now each country, the books of accounts are maintained separately. As such, company code is where the books of accounts are also maintained. A plant within the company code is the location where the activities related to the business of the company code are carried out. 
So any location from where any activity related to the business of that company code are carried out is what we call as a plant. So if it's a manufacturing company, then the location from where all the manufacturing activities, the purchase activities, the sales activities, or even service related activities are carried out. That's what we call as a plant. Similarly, in a trading company, the location from where all the purchase and sales activities are carried out is what we call as a plant. Similarly, in a services company, the location from where all the services are carried out is what we call as a plant. All right? So story location, it is the element within the plant where all the goods or material required to carry out activities at the plant level are maintained. Since the element is used for maintaining the goods or material, the stock basically required to carry out the activities, store locations are usually physically located within the plant premises. So store location in the real world we call as a store, right? And usually stores are physically located within the plant and that's how in the SAP system also we are going to define. Coming to a purchasing organization, this is similar to a purchasing department. However, in the SAP system, a purchasing organization is made responsible for all purchase related activities or information. That means without a purchasing organization, any purchase related activity cannot be carried out in the SAP system. So whenever you require a material or a service to be purchased, it has to go through the purchasing organization. Okay. The next one would be valuation area or level. Whenever a company maintains stock of any material, it normally specifies certain value to indicate how much is that material worth to the company. So this valuation to indicate the worth of the material, the level at which it is going to be maintained, the level at which the material valuation is going to be maintained will be indicated using this element called valuation area or level. In the SAP system, we can maintain it at either company code level or plant level. And most of the time it will be maintained at the plant level because that is where the material stock is maintained. And one very important thing to remember is the assignment of the valuation area or level to either the company code or plant level is only a one time activity. At the time of installation, we're going to select the indicator level and done. After the application is installed and the users are using the application, at any cost, you cannot change the valuation area indicator okay the last one is controlling area now this is an interesting thing it is used to capture the value of all the transactions carried out in the company code automatically and update them in the relevant accounting ledgers or the accounting system now in the real time without an application whenever you're carrying out any value related transaction or any transaction which has a value then a copy of the document will be sent to the accounts department so that they can make the relevant entry so that means the department which is actually carrying out the transaction will make an entry in their own registers and the accounts department will also be repeating that entry in their own registers so there is duplication of work getting carried out Whenever you are automating this type of duplication or repeating the activity twice should not take place. So in order to avoid this duplication of work in the SAP system, an, a different element called the controlling area will be created and used for capturing the value of the transactions in the company code automatically. Now, since the controlling area is used for capturing the value of all the transactions, it will normally have the same financial structure as the company code because it, it needs to have the same financial structure. It will be created as a copy of the company code, thereby 
automatically copying all the financial structure already maintained for the company code. Right, so these are the definitions of the enterprise structure. Let's see how to create and assign or link these elements together so that we have the structure ready for carrying out MM related activities in the SAP system. The elements of the enterprise structure are all configuration related elements. So the creation and assignment of these elements should take place in the IMG screen. So we need to log into the SAP application, go to SPRO, type in SPRO in the command box, click on SAP reference IMG button, and then we go to enterprise structure. The first one we need to create is the company. So we go to definition, financial accounting, define company. Company is the level where there is no business activity carried out, nor do we maintain any type of financial records. So for practice or even in the real time, we just click on new entries, enter a one to six character code and description. And in the real time, we enter all these details, the street address, PO box, post report, city. However, for practice, you only need to enter country, language, and currency. Now in the SAP system, every field that has a bubble like this against it indicates that the entries to that field are limited to the options already configured in the system. So to check and select from those options, click on this bubble or press the F4 button on your keyboard. Almost all the countries in the world have already been defined in the standard system. So select the country in which you want the company to be located, the parent company is located, or whichever country you want for your practice. Similarly, language. Now language here indicates the business communication language used by this company for communicating both within the company as well as outside the company. Because of that, there are only very few languages maintained in the standard system. So select the relevant language for communication by this company. Currency indicates the currency of this company. So based on the country, the currency would change as you understand. So select the relevant currency also. So for your practice, entries for these five fields are enough. Once you have entered the details, click on save. Now clicking on save in the configuration screen, for the first time in the transaction screen, you'll be seeing a pop-up box called the prompt for customizing request. This is also called as a transport request. In the real world, when you're working in a project, each consultant will be assigned their own request number to save the data in their own request number so that it is easy to track what each of the consultants are doing. For your practice, click on this create request button, enter a description, violent recorded sessions. Pressing enter, the system will automatically create the request number. Now this is a request number in which we need to save all the configuration activities that we're going to carry out for your course. Clicking on continue will save the creation of this company into that request number. So like this, the request number will ensure that you are saving the data into the relevant database and it is easy to track. So the company is created, yay. The next one would be to create a company code. So go back to the IMG screen. Again, the same part, enterprise structure, definition, financial accounting, edit, copy, delete, check company code. Click on execute. Double click on copy, delete, check company code. The double click on copy, delete, check company code will open the creation page. Click on the copy as or copy organizational object. And the system will start reading from the database. The reason we are going to copy, use the copy process is to ensure that we are able to 
create all the backend financial structure for the company code that we are going to create. Since MM will not be able to maintain all the financial structures, that is actually the job of the FICO consultant. During practice, we are going to copy from a standard company code to the company code that we are going to create. Once you get this pop-up in the from company code, Click on the bubble or press F4 and select the standard company code which is 1000. And in the two company code, enter a code for your company code. So here itself, you're going to create that code to identify your company code. Click on continue and the system will start asking a series of questions. On all these pop ups, irrespective of the type of question of the data, just click on yes and continue to ensure that all the data is copied automatically. Now the reference company code, the standard company code has a currency euro. If you want to maintain euro for your company code, click on no here. If you don't want euro as the currency, click on yes and change the currency. The rest of the pop-ups, just keep clicking on the continue button to ensure that the data is automatically copied. Now this process will take certain time to be completed. Just wait till that process is completed. Once the process is completed, you get the request number pop up again. Click on ensure that it is the same and click on continue. So you'll get several pop-ups like this for transport intervals. On everything, click on continue or yes. Only on this small pop-up, click on cancel and in the next pop-up, click on copy. The rest of the things, you just keep clicking on continue or yes. You will get a lot of pop-ups. The reason is it is copying all the relevant data from the standard company code to the company code that we are going to create. So just keep clicking on continue. At no point except for the small pop-up, at no other point, click on no or cancel. Because if you do that, the copying will not be completed properly and the company code that we're going to create will not have all the relevant backend financial data. And later on, it will cause a lot of issues. So once the copying is completed, you get the copied pop-up confirmation. So we selected 1000 and copied it to VG01, that is the company code, code that we're going to use. Once you get the copy confirmation, now not only the backend financial data has been copied from 1000 to VG01, 
but also the name, address, and communication details have also been copied from this particular company code to the new one. So we need to have changed that to indicate the company code details as per our company code. So click on the back button, double click on edit company code data, go to your company code, or just click on position, enter your company code in the pop-up, click on continue, double click on this entry and make the necessary changes. So here I'm going to say company one, change the city, country, language. Once you have entered these details, click on the address button and update the complete address in the popper. When you are entering the details in the popper, the only details which are required are the title, name, country, and language. These are the four fields which are required for your practice. In the real time, you have to enter all the details because whenever the company code communicates with any internal or external entity, the details for communication and address will be taken from this screen. Right? So once you have updated, click on save. You get the request number pop up again, ensure you are selecting the correct one. Done. Yay, we are done with creating the company code. The next step would be to create the plant. Go back to the IMG screen. Now we go to the same part, enterprise structure, definition. But now we go to logistics general, define copy to the check plant, execute. Double click on define plant in the pop up. You get a pop up. Here you double click on define plant. Click on new entries, enter a one, two, four character code and a description. Now, since plant is the level at which activities are carried out, you don't have to copy it from any standard plant. And in this screen, factory calendar is a mandatory field. Factory calendar identifies or is used to maintain the holiday calendar as well as the week offs. For your practice, you have about 38 standard factory calendars. The others that you see have been created by other users in this particular practice server. For your practice, select only one of the three standard factory calendars, which is 01 or GB or US. Now these three factory calendars have standard five day work week and holidays and Saturdays and Sundays are considered as optional holidays so that you can go ahead and carry out your activities, concentrate on the process rather than getting frustrated with the holidays being described as mandatory holidays. So for now we have selected GB Click on the address button here and again update the address as discussed earlier. The only fields which are required for your practice is the title, name, country and language. So enter those values, click on save and you get the address pop up again for confirmation, confirm it and save it. Done. Click on the next button and create another plant. So create at least two plants for your practice in the real world. Again, it depends on how many plants the client has. You can use the same factory calendar for both the plants or different plants. That's up to you for your practice. I'm just going to use the same thing, same factory calendar for both the plants. Once you are done, come back, exit the screen. Next step would be to create storage location. Again, we go back to the IMG screen, enterprise structure, definition, materials management, maintain storage location, click on execute. Now, since storage locations 
are in the real world physically located within the plant. When I click on execute, the system will ask me the plant for which you're going to create the story location. So enter one of the plant codes that we created. Click on new entries, enter a one to four character code and a description. So here you can use any codes to identify the story location. For your practice, you can enter anything, but the same code should not be repeated within the same plant. Okay. Press enter and click on save. It will ask you for the request number. Save it. Go back. Again, click on execute, enter the second plant, and maintain the plant uh, story location course. Because I'm creating the story location for a new plant, I can use the same codes as in the previous plant. But in the description, as you can see, I'm clearly identifying for which plant the story location is getting created. So if you want, you can also follow the same process for your practice. But like I said, in the real time, it all depends on what is convenient to the end users. Once you are done, you're done creating the store locations for both the plants. Yay. Next step would be to create purchasing organization. Now purchasing organization is the entity which is responsible for all purchase related activities. and the level at which these purchasing organizations are created depends on each country, each company. So based on the business activities carried out in the company, purchasing organizations are maintained at different levels. For our practice, we're going to create the purchasing organization, one at the company code level and one for each of the plants. So go back to the IMB screen, the same path, Maintain purchasing organization, click on execute, click on new entries, enter a one to four character code and a description. To make it easy for me to remember the codes for different students during practice, I tend to use the Codes, the same codes as for the plant and company code. However, as you can see in the description, I'm clearly identifying what is the structure description. So, with the description, I can understand that it is a purchasing organization rather than company code or plant. Right? For your practice, you can also follow the same process or you can give whatever code you want. The only restriction is the code should not have already been created in the system. So because this is a practice server, there will be a lot of codes already defined. So choose a code which is not already existing and you can use it, right? So the next step would be to check the valuation level or valuation area. You go back to the IMG screen, enterprise structure, definition, logistics general, define valuation level. Now, since this is a practice server, the valuation level is already maintained in the system. So when I click on execute here, system will not give me, the application will not give me an option to change the valuation level. It's already defined at the plant level and we get the message, valuation level cannot be maintained already defined. However, in the real world, when the application is installed for the first time, this screen will be in editable mode and we need to select, it is the MM consultants we need to select the level at which the material valuation is maintained. Again, in the real time also, once the level is maintained and the data, the client data, what we call as legacy data is uploaded into the system, the, this page, even in the real time, the screen will go into a non-edit mode like you're seeing right now. Since it's a one-time activity, after the installation, once the users start using the application, at no point can this level be changed, right? 
So for your practice, just check the screen and come out. The last one is for creating the controlling area. So we'll go back to the IMG screen, enterprise structure, definition, controlling, maintain controlling area, click on execute, double click on maintain controlling area, click on new entries. Don't enter the detail directly, rather click on this button called controlling area is equal to company code, which is right next to the code field. When you click on this, it will show me the pop-up to enter the company code. When I enter the code in this pop-up, the details for the controlling area code, name, currency type, currency, chart of accounts, and fiscal year variant, values for these six fields will be automatically copied from the data already maintained for this company code, right? Since we have already maintained the structure for this company code, and since we want this controlling area to handle activities for this company code, it, since it needs to have the same financial structure as that of this company code, we're going to copy that structure from this company code. So click on, enter the company code, click on continue. So this data will be automatically copied. Once it is copied, change the name to indicate that it is a controlling area. And in this assignment control field, select the first option which says controlling area, same as company code. So select it, click on save, done. Yeah, we're done with creating the controlling area also. Yeah, so we're done with creation of the enterprise structure. So the next step would be to assign or link all these structures together, the elements together. So we go back to the IMG screen, enterprise structure, assignment, financial accounting. First one would be to assign the company code to company, company, click on execute. All the company codes would be listed here. So go to your company code and enter the relevant code for your company or client. If you don't remember the code, press F4 here and search in the list. Select it and click on save. Done. Next step would be to assign plan to company code. So go to logistics general, assign plan to company code, click on execute, click on new entries, enter the company code and the plan. So in each row, depending on the number of plans in the company code, entries in both the columns have to be there, mandatory rule. Click on save. So we just linked, assign these plans to this company code. Next step would be to assign the purchasing organization to company code and plans. So we'll go back to assignment, materials management. First step would be to assign purchasing organization to company code. Click on execute. Go to the purchasing organization and enter the relevant company code. Whatever is the code created for your company code, assign it, click on save. By assigning the company code to the purchasing organizations, we are indicating to the system that this purchasing organization will be responsible for plans only within this company code. If you don't assign a company code like this, then this purchasing organization can be made responsible for any plant under any company code provided those plans and company codes exist within the same application. Usually since the SAP application will be installed in one company code, the purchasing organizations will need to be responsible for the plans within the company code. So most of the cases, the company code, the purchasing organization will be assigned to a specific company code. Click on the back button. Second step would be to now specify which purchasing organization is responsible for 
which plant. So go to assign purchasing organization to plant, execute, click on new entries, enter the purchasing organization and the relevant plant. VG01 I've used to identify the central purchasing organization, so it should handle both the plants. Plant 1 purchasing organization should be responsible for plant 1, plant 2 purchasing organization for plant 2. Enter and save it. Done. Okay, so we are done with linking the purchasing organizations to the plant. And the last step would be to assign the controlling area to the company code. So go to assignment controlling, assign company code to controlling area, click on execute. You get the list of controlling areas, go to your controlling area, select it. Now double click on assignment of company codes. Double clicking on it will open the screen, click on new entries and enter the relevant company code. If you don't remember, if you don't understand which code to enter here, enter the same code as the controlling area over here and save it. And make sure that you're only entering one code for the controlling area since we indicated this controlling area is going to handle only one company code. And if you enter mo make more than one entry here, then the system will not be able to understand which company codes activities have to be handled by this controlling area. Once the assignment is done, when you go back to the assignment screen again, the system will not give you an option for new entries because the company code is already assigned to that controlling area. Yay, we're done with the assignment also. So once the assignment is done, if you want to see the complete structure for the enterprise structure for our company code that we created from the company code level, go to enterprise structure, definition, financial accounting, edit, copy, delete, check company code, double click on copy, delete, check company code in the pop-up, click on structure, then click on navigation. You get this pop-up. Read this pop-up, the details in the pop-up. Click on continue. Then you'll see the list of all the company codes created in this, uh, this particular server, this particular application. Click on find, enter your controlling area. and double click on this entry to show you the details. So this company code belongs to this company, has this controlling area, trade control area, plans and purchasing organizations. When you open the plant company, it will show me only one company code because we have assigned, created and assigned only one company code. Similarly, in the controlling area, it will show only one company code. Credit control area, even though we did not create it, it will be automatically created because we copied the structure from the standard company code. So leave it as it is. It has to be created, but just leave it as it is. When you open plant, it will show me the four story locations within it, the company code, and alphabetically the first purchasing organization responsible for this plant. Similarly, the second plant, fourth Story locations, company code, purchase organization. When you open the purchase organization, it should show the company code and the plans which is responsible for it, which it is responsible for. Similarly, plant one will be responsible for plant one. Plant two purchase organization will be responsible for plant two. So all this structure that you see in the screen that I've just shown you. When you create your company code during practice, you also have to see the same thing. Even in the real time, once the elements are assigned, the same thing should be displayed, will be displayed. All right? So this is what the enterprise structure creation and assignment is all about. We are done. Yay. Now, one thing to remember during the creation of the enterprise structure is, except for the company or client, all the other elements, which are company code, plan, storage location, purchasing organization, controlling area, are identified with a one to four character code. Okay. 
after the enterprise structure is assigned, very important configuration of the, in the nodes, all the paths and the creation is already given for you so that you can follow this particular thing. In the real time, that is when you're working in real world, company, company code and controlling area will be created and assigned by the FICO consultants. Plants, store locations, purchasing organizations, and valuation area configuration will be handled by the MN consultants. Okay. Now, each company code, when you are carrying out the activities in that company code, the company, these activities should be allowed to be carried out only for the month in which you are carrying out the transactions. In the real world, when we are working in a company, the company will allow the transactions to be carried out only for the current month, the calendar month. If you try to carry out any activity for any previous month or the next month, your reporting manager is going to ask you why you are carrying it out and they will not allow you to carry out any activity for any other month. So similarly, in the SAP system also, the posting period element is used to identify the month of transaction for a specific company code so that activities can be carried out or transactions can be executed only for that month. So once the enterprise structure assignment is completed, it is mandatory that we need to specify the posting period so that activities can be carried out limited, restricted to the month of transaction. Now this posting period is dependent on the financial year followed by a company code. So based on the financial year, the relevant posting period will be assigned to each of the calendar months. As you can understand, since there are 12 calendar months, there will also be 12 posting periods. Let me show you how this posting period works. Now, like I said, posting period is dependent on the financial year followed by the company code. And usually in the real world, there are about four financial years which are followed by most of the companies throughout the world. So the first column identifies the posting period for that calendar month. So these are the financial years, January to December, April to March, July to June, or October to September. So in case your company code, the client follows the financial year, let's say from October to September, then posting period one will correspond to calendar month 10. Posting period two will correspond to calendar month 11. So on until posting period 12 will identify calendar month nine of the next year. Now, just like in any transaction, whenever you specify a date, you, you also specify the year. Similarly here, when we assign the posting period, the posting year should also be assigned. Now the posting year for every posting period will again depend on, depend on the financial year followed and will be the same for all the posting periods as the year for the first month of that financial year. For example, if my client has the financial year October to September, the month I'm in right now is August. So the posting period will be 11, but the year will be the year for the first month of that financial year. Now, since the financial year started in October, which is October of 2017, the posting year will be 2017. So for my client, which was financial year is from October to September, for August 2018, calendar month August, calendar year 2018, the posting period and year will be 11, 2017, right? Similarly, for each of these other financial year years also, we have to check and assign the similar posting period and posting year. Now, one thing to remember is the company code that we create during practice is copied from a standard company code and that company code's financial year is from January to December. So 
the company code that we create during practice will also have the same financial year, which is January to December. Now here for January to December, both the calendar month and posting period, calendar year and the posting year will be the same. So when we are assigning the posting period during practice, it may look as if you are assigning the calendar month and year. However, please remember we are not assigning the calendar year and month. We are assigning the posting year and posting period for that company code. So the, to assign the posting period, again, we go back to the ING screen, go to Logistics General, Material Master, Basic Settings, Maintain Company Codes for Materials Management, click on Execute. You'll see the list of all the company codes here. Click on Position, enter your company code, continue. And here, I need to enter the current posting year and the posting period, which is 8. When you press enter, values in these four columns will be automatically updated. So what are these other four columns are? The first two columns identify the last posting period for this company code. So in case you want to make any entry to the last posting period, the system will get that data from these two columns. And there are certain financial entries which uh, finance team may want to make in the last year. So that information will be taken from these two columns. Okay. And these ABP DBP columns are used for specifying whether the client allows any back posting that is posting to the previous period or not. If ABP is checked, then it indicates that as a rule, the client allows posting to the previous period, which is indicated by these two columns okay dbp indicates check in the dbp column will indicate that as a rule the client does not allow any back posting so if the consultant gets any request when dbp is checked from the users to allow back posting then it will not be allowed okay if both the columns are not checked like in this company code then it indicates the, that the back posting will be conditional based. So if both are not checked and we get a request from the user, that request has to come from a specific level which will be already discussed and identified before at the time of installation. So if the request comes from that person or that level, only then the ABP will be checked and the system will allow posting to the previous period. All right. So this is what, so assigning the posting period will actually end the creation of the enterprise structure and make sure during practice that you are entering the posting period immediately after the enterprise structure assignment is completed. All right. So this ends the enterprise structure part. The next session, we're going to start the master data part. Hello everyone. So this session, the topic would be master data. Master data can be defined as a set of data which remains constant for a long time in the database. And this is also the set of data which is repeatedly used without changing the element data. So whenever any transactions are carried out, the set of permanent data which is repeatedly used over and over without basically changing the data is what we call as master data. In the SAP system, again, every component will have its own set of master data. In the MM component, we have four types of master data. We have material master, vendor master, purchasing info record, and source determination. So let's talk about each of these elements individually. The first one would be material master. Material, we're talking about the resource material. So material resource can be defined as a set of elements which are normally purchased externally and which are 
both quantifiable and non-quantifiable elements and those elements are what are required to carry out the business activities of the company code right so quantifiables are those elements which are measured in terms of the quantity so here we're talking about all the solid items liquids gas elements whereas non-quantifiables are usually the services because services are not measured in terms of a quantity right now the material master is the record of all the information which is required to use a material in the sap system so whatever be the nature of its requirement or the way you're going to use it whatever material or services are required to be used you need to have a material master created right now all this information maintained in the material master record is logically grouped into divisions called views. For example, you have basic data view, purchasing views, sales views, production views, accounting views, storage views, and other such views. Now each material master record will have at least one view. The data in each view actually relates to a specific department in the company code. So if I want to use the material in the purchasing department, then I need to select and maintain the information in the purchasing view. Similarly, if I want to maintain, uh, use the material in the sales department, then I have to maintain the sales view. Similarly, production, I need to maintain the data in the production view, so on and so forth. So since each view pertains to a specific department, views are also called as user departments. When a user selects the view, looking at the name of the view, they can understand what type of data is included in it. But within the SAP system, internally, each view is identified with a one character code called maintenance status. So each view will have this maintenance status code using which the system will be able to understand what type of data is maintained and based on that where the material should be allowed to be used, right? So without selecting the specific view, that view's maintenance status code will not be added to the material master and without that maintenance status code, the system will not allow the material to be used in that particular process or department. Now the data in each view is again divided into sections called subscreens. Each view again will have at least one subscreen. So for example, the basic data view is divided into material description, general data, material authorization, dimensions, and other such subscreens. So each subscreen again, the grouping the subscreen is grouped based on the type of information maintained, right? So again, in each subscreen, the sub each of the subscreen consists of multiple fields. At least one field should be there in a view in a subscreen. So the data entered or required by the user to use that material is actually entered in the field. And this data which is saved, which is entered in the field, will be automatically saved in a corresponding database field. So your material mass record will look something like this. At the top, you have material master divided into views, which is divided into subscreens, which consist of fields. And the data maintained in the field is automatically saved into the database field. It goes two ways because when you enter the data, it goes to the database field and when you try to check the data it is retrieved from the database field right so in this way all the data which is maintained in the material master for any component will be linked to a specific database field and without the data getting saved in a database field you cannot carry out any transactions in the sap system right since the transactions in the SAP system are dependent on a database, the application is also called as a database dependent application. Okay. Now, in order to create a material master record, the following initial information is required. First, you require the material number, then the industry sector, then material type, then selection of views, and then 
organizational data or level. Let's look at what each of these things are. The first one is material number. Material number is used to identify the material or service used in the company code. So like I indicated earlier, every element used in the SAP system should have an identifier. So the material or the service used in the SAP system is identified by this material number, which is a one to 18 character alphanumeric code, which can be assigned either internally or externally. Internal assignment takes place when the SAP system itself automatically creates the or generates the number based on some predefined number range. External assignment takes place when the end users create the number of code to identify the material based on some predefined number or alphabet range. So internal assignment is with, done by the SAP application itself. External assignment is done by the end users. Okay. And every material should have a number to identify it and the maximum number is 18 characters. It cannot exceed the 18 character limit. Next one is industry sector. It is used to identify the industry in which the material is used. Since the application will be normally installed only for one company code, the industry sector will also identify the industry in which the company code operates. As such, it is identified by only a one character alphanumeric code. Material type identifies the usage of the material, how you are going to use the material. So for example, raw material, finished products, semi-finished, trading goods, packaging material, consumables or services so like this, based on the type of usage, the system will identify and maintain that information. So material type is identified by one to four character code. Now in the standard system, we have about 50 predefined material types to be used. And these 50 are predefined both in the practice server as well as in the real time. Okay. Since there are already about 50 50 predefined material types, usually we don't create any new material types. It is not required to create any new material types. Okay. All the existing material types. In fact, for any client, usually we use very less than even the predefined list. Okay. The next one is selection of views. In this, we select the views for which the data will be maintained based on where the material has to be used, in which department which process the material will be used. Based on that, the views will be selected. And based on the view selected, the relevant enterprise structure data will be maintained in the organizational data. Okay, so without this initial data, the information about a material cannot be maintained in the SAP system. So let's see how to create a material master record. Material master record can be created in two ways. First one is, as you can see, for immediate activation, creation and activation, that is as soon as the material information is maintained and saved, I can start using the material. Or the second option is where I create it for a future dated activation. Right? So let's see each one. So for creating the material, we need to connect to the server. So let's connect to the server and start creating the, we need to connect to the server. So let's connect to the server and start creating the material master. So we go to the transaction code, enter the transaction code M101 on the screen here. In the command box, press enter. In the first field is material number, leave it blank. Industry sector, for your practice, select the option mechanical engineering, identified with the code M. Material type, select the material type identified by the code ROH. Now, in case these codes, either in the drop down list here or anywhere in the SAP system, if the codes are not getting displayed in any of the drop down list, then exit the transaction. Click on this button, the icon, customize local layout. Click on the options and options. 
then you get this screen go to interaction design visualization one and ensure that these two boxes show keys and sort by keys are checked only when they are checked the codes in any of the drop down list will be displayed so go back and execute the transaction now select the codes mechanical engineering m and material type roh raw material press enter will show you the list of views available for selection so here the views which are displayed are default select uh, the default selection how to manage this list and show that the views the selection of views is limited to the options available required for the client i'll show you later on during configuration for now select the views basic data one purchasing general plan data storage one storage two and accounting one select these five views and click on default setting click on continue and it will show me the list of the organizational data where you need to enter the plant and the storage location so enter one of the plants and one of the storage locations in the plant click on continue when you click on continue the system will show me the first view which is basic data one that i've selected and this is the material number automatically created by the system the next field is the material description which is a 40 character field in which you can enter the description for that material in the real world the users are going to enter the actual description of that material for your practice you can enter something like this next field is base unit of measure this identifies the unit of measurement in which the sap application will handle this material whenever this material is used so here you can press f4 and see the list of all the options available you have over 290 options so you have a lot of different types of units of measure for the practice i'm going to straight take the standard kg material group identifies what kind of a material you are going to use remember material type identifies the usage of the material however i still need to specify what kind of material it is so that is what the material group is all about when you press f4 in this field you get to see a lot of options so you have options like steels electronics mechanics fasteners cables engines pumps laptop systems classic pc systems monitors hard disk so all the different types of material which can be used in a company are identified in the material group but now you can select any of the predefined items how to create the material group we'll see later old material number and extend material group are used only for reference purposes these are used to identify the legacy numbers and the groups for example this is the number which is used for identifying the material in the sap system but before sap is installed the client would have used some code or number to identify the material so that is the old material number similarly the extra material group is the group used by the client before sap okay in case the client requires to use these for reference purposes only then we're going to maintain it if not we're going to remove those fields mm -hmm. Division identifies the category under which the material will be sold. For example, whether it's a, if it's a vehicle manufacturing company, then whether it's two wheeler, three wheeler, four wheeler, six wheeler, eight wheeler, so on and so forth. Each of these will become a category under which the material will be sold. So based on the type of material which will be sold, the client will give us a list of divisions which are actually created and maintained by the sd consultants the sales and distribution consultants and because the material which you're going to create if it is a finished product or a trading board then you need to specify the division if not just leave it blank lab or office is used to identify the lab or office in which the material use will be restricted to that is it identifies the lab to which this material can be used 
if I specify any lab here, then that material can be used only in that lab or office, right? Product allocation is where we're going to specify the program name in which the stock of that material, wherever it is received, whenever it is received, a certain percentage should be allocated to a specific process or product. So in case if the company has any such process, wherein certain percentage of the stock should be kept aside for a specific use, then the relevant program name will be entered here to automatically allocate that particular percentage. Material status field is used for restrictions, for specifying certain restrictions on the material. For example, if the material should not be purchased until further notice at any location of the company code, then we use this field to specify that blocking. Similarly, if it should not be used for product costing or it is used only for pilot phase or it should be blocked for all types of procurement and the stock keeping. So like this, based on the restrictions required by the client, we're going to configure it and the relevant status will be specified along with the date from which that status will be applicable or the restriction is effective, right? Then we maintain the gross weight, net weight, volume, along with the size and dimensions because the weight volume cannot be constant irrespective of the size or dimension. So whenever weight and volume is specified, the relevant size or dimension also has to be specified. So for your practice, you can either enter the size or dimension or you can just leave it blank, doesn't matter. Whether you enter the weight or not, no need to, even if you enter the weight, you don't need to specify the size or dimension because it's only for practice. Pressing enter will take you to the next screen, which is the purchasing screen, where we're going to maintain information common to purchasing the material everywhere and also specific to purchasing the material in this plant. So here we have, again, base unit of measure and material group automatically copied from the basic data view. Purchasing group is used to identify the person or group of people responsible for purchasing this material in this plant. So for your practice, again, you have some predefined purchasing groups. Select any one. How to create a new purchasing group, we'll see later on in configuration. Order unit is used to specify the unit of measurement in which this material is purchased in this plant. And it has to be maintained only when it is different from the base unit. So the base unit is in kg, but the order unit is in cardboard boxes. Only then I'm going to specify the order unit. Now, when I specify the order unit, before I leave this view, the system will ask me for the conversion factor, that is the relationship between the order unit and the base unit. Now, how many boxes make one kg or how many cages make one box or how many boxes make one kg, right? So unless this relationship is, this conversion factor is maintained, system will not allow me to proceed further, okay? Now, in case the order unit differs or varies every time that you order, it's a variable order unit, then every time I cannot expect the users to come here and make the change and maintain the conversion factor. So for that, what SAP has provided is an uh, option to maintain different alternate units and their measurement unit, their conversion factor in the Okay, there seems to be some issue here. So usually what you see here is column like this, where you have the alternate unit and the conversion factor in base unit. So when you maintain the data, the system will automatically show you that information for that material. So in that material, whenever you maintain, system will automatically pick the conversion factor from this additional data option, okay? The next screen is plant specific material status, which is similar to the cross plan material status in the basic data one view. It is used to specify the restrictions for this material in this plant, only in this specific plant. 
okay so again the same options and you also have to specify the valid from date another interesting field is this qualification for free goods distribution this field will be required to be maintained in case the material is being received free of cost or will be sold free of cost so without specifying that eligibility the system will not allow the material to be either received free of cost or sold free of cost okay so another field is this gr processing time gr means goods receipt so this field will be used to maintain the time taken for inspection so if the material has to be checked before it has to be used the quality check has to be completed before it can be used then based on the amount of time required for that quality check if, if it takes even one day then i have to wait for one day before i can start issuing it right so that will add to your time to issue okay post inspection stock if it is checked it indicates that whenever stock of this material is received in this plant the entire stock has to be checked for quality okay only when it clears the quality can it be moved to usable data and if you want to maintain the part number for this material you can use this field for specifying the manufacturer part number and specify who is the manufacturer and if you want to link the part number to further activities of the material like any quality process or for creating a purchase order then you can use this manufacturer part profile field to make those activities dependent on the manufacturer part number make the manufacturer part number a mandatory requirement for carrying out any of these activities okay this will be required only when the client process requires it Another interesting field is this purchasing value key, which is used to maintain values for multiple delivery and purchase related elements. For example, whenever we send a purchase order to the vendor, we usually specify a date by which the material has to be delivered. Now, what if the vendor does not deliver on that date? Do you send any reminders to that vendor? And if you're going to send the reminder, when are you going to send it so when do, when do we send the first reminder second reminder third reminder it is not necessary that you have to send all the three reminders but in case you send at least one reminder when are you going to send it is it before the delivery date or after the delivery date and if you are sending a reminder should the vendor acknowledge the receipt of that communication okay that can also be specified in the purchasing value key the delivery tolerances that is the quantity variance acceptable when you are receiving this material in this plant when you are receiving this material anywhere will also be specified in the purchasing value key if the tolerance is not there that is the quantity order should be exactly delivered then the tolerances will be zero so zero tolerance indicates the quantity has to be delivered exactly in the same quantity Shipping instruction identifies the specific instruction to be followed by the vendor when they are delivering the material. Now the users will not be able to enter the values for any of these elements. They can only select the relevant combination of these elements. So the end user selects something like this and that means the first reminder will be sent three days after the delivery date. Second reminder will be sent eight days. Third reminder will be sent fifteen days. What will be the content of that communication? Who, how it will be sent will all be, will be designed in the program by the programmer, and the setup of sending it will be done by the base system. And shipping instruction is V1. There is a ten percent under delivery tolerance and the over delivery tolerance of ten percent. That is plus or minus ten percent is acceptable. For this material, and the vendor should acknowledge the receipt of all the communications sent to the vendor relating to this material, the purchase or delivery. So, like this, based on the material, the relevant combination will be selected by the users, and based on those 
values, the relevant activities will be carried out. Pressing enter will take you to the next view, which is plan data storage one. This view is used to maintain the data required for storing this material anywhere along with this particular storage location in this plan. So again, base unit of measure is automatically copied. Unit of issue specifies the unit of measurement in which the material is issued. Again, it has to be maintained only if it is different from the base unit of measure. Okay. And if you maintain the unit of issue different from the base unit, system will ask you for the conversion factor. So if I specify a bushel, then the system will ask me, okay, it's a little bit strange. Okay, so there have been some changes here. So again, it will ask me for the conversion factor. So if required, you can also maintain storage bin. If this material is stored at a specific location in the storage location, at a specific place in the storage location, the place, if it has a code to be identified, will be called as a storage bin, which can be maintained. If this material has to be maintained at a specific temperature or meets some specific storage conditions, then these two fields can be used to maintain it. These conditions will be specific or common to everywhere the material is stored. So in case it has to be kept in containers or it should be always in a packing condition or it requires a refrigerator, it needs to be refrigerated always. So like this, you can specify any specific storage condition. Similarly, if the material has to be maintained at a specific temperature point, you can use the temperature conditions to maintain. Right. So let's say I maintain some values here, which will be common to this material. If the material is a dangerous code, then the hazardous, the relevant hazardous material number or the hazardous chemical number should be maintained in this field. Other interesting fields are this shelf life data subscreen, where you need to maintain the data relevant for calculating the expiry date of this material in case it is a expiry related item. So from the time this material is manufactured or combined, what is the maximum storage period? And from the time this material is received in this storage location and plant, any time, what is the minimum remaining shelf life? And the time unit in which this shelf life is calculated will be specified in this field. Okay. So maintaining the values here will automatically calculate the expiry time whenever this material is received in this story location of this plant, ensuring that the expiry date will be clearly identified. Pressing enter will take you to the next view, which is plant data storage two. Here the weight, volume, size, and dimensions will be automatically copied from the basic data view. The basic data view, the weight, volume, and dimensions will be common to everywhere. But in case the weight, volume, or size, and dimensions are different for this plant and storage location, then that value can be changed here. If you change the if you change the values here, it will not affect the basic data view. And after changing in the future, if you change the values in the basic data view, the values in this view are not going to be affected since they are now delinked, they are different. These values are specific for this plant and this story location. Okay. Pressing enter will take you to the last view, which is accounting one. Accounting one is where you're going to maintain the valuation related information for maintaining the stock of this material in this plant. And these values are specific to each plant. The valuation of any material can be normally calculated in two ways. In the price control field. So we have standard price or moving average price. Standard price will be selected when the value of this material is not dependent on any 
on either the total stock maintained or any external factors. Moving average price will be maintained when the stock valuation has to be recalculated every time there is a stock transaction or a change in any of the external factors. So when you select standard price, the price will be maintained in the standard price field. If you select moving average, the price will be maintained in the moving average, moving price field. For your factor, select the price control as standard and enter some value in the standard price field. Now this price, is it per one base unit or two base units or one and a half base unit, that per unit, uh, how much units, how many units will be specified here, which will be always calculated in terms of the base unit. Okay, once you specify the price and you maintain stock of this material in this plan, the total stock will be displayed here and as per the price, the total value of the stock will be maintained here, which needs to be again updated in a GL account. So that GL account will be taken from this valuation class. The valuation class is a link between the valuation price and the material and the GL account in which the valuation price is maintained. So for your practice, usually you get uh, other valuation classes, which are 3000, 3001. However, in this system, it looks like you only have one valuation class. So just leave it as it is and click on save to create this material in this plant with the data that you have maintained. And once you save it, the material with the information that you have created can be used for immediate, used for immediate, uh, sorry, can be used immediately for any process. So we'll come back and uh, I've just made uh, message changes in the material master settings so that we get the standard uh, valuation classes back. So let me show you how to how those options are, what those options are. And when you want to create another material with the values taken from the material that we just created, you can use the copy from field to enter that material number which we just created so that the values can be automatically copied. So here, just enter, check the material number, I think it is 892, 941. Okay. So enter the value here, 941. Press enter, select the same set of five views. Enter the plant. Now if you want to copy the plant specific data, then you can use these fields, copy the data. If you don't want to copy the plant specific data, you only want to copy the material specific data, don't enter anything in the copy form for plant and store allocation. Click continue and it will copy the data. Like I told you, the material specific data will be copied. This is the new material number. So maintain the data required for this new material. Purchasing group will not be copied. And you can, if you want, you can change the purchasing value key here. We plan data storage. And now, press enter, I get the standard views. So these are the valuation classes that I'm talking about, 3000, So you can select either one here. And select the price control as standard, and enter some price here. Save. So like this, you can create as many material as are required for your practice. Copying the data from the previous plan also can be done. So all you need to do now is to change the material description and any other data which is relevant for your material. For the new material. So, right? So in this way, I can create as many material 
create at least three to four material for your initial practice, right? Once the data is maintained, when you want to use that material, how uh, you want to change the material data, how to change it, we'll see in a little while. Let's just make the entry here. Standard. Okay. Now, after the material is created, if you want to add any views to that particular material, you can enter that material number here. Select those additional views, enter the plant, storage location. That will directly take you to the relevant view for which the data was not maintained earlier. But since we did not enter the storage location earlier, I'm just going to create it again. Now this is how the material is created for immediate use or immediate activation. For future data, the transaction code is MM11. Okay, enter the transaction code MM11 in the command box. The screen looks almost the same except for an additional field here. Called change schedule for. So here you're going to enter the date on which you want the material to be activated. So whatever date you select, the system will activate the material only on that date. So let's say I create the material and then I'm going to show you what is the effect of the scheduled creation of material. Again, the data is the same that you're going to enter. There is no difference. Here I'm going to just say future data. I'm going to maintain the same data. This is the valuation class 3001, standard price. Specify some data. Now, along with this, I can also use the future price field to enter a price which will be automatically updated on this specified date. Whether you are creating the material for a future date or you are creating the material for immediate activation, this field can be used in both cases to specify a future price change from a specified date in case the data is already available, right? So pressing enter. Now when I created the material earlier in MM01, we got the message material number so and so created. But now when I save the data, I get the information data will be scheduled for so and so date. And if I use try to use this new material as the reference to create a new material, Let's see what's going to happen. System will give me an error saying the reference material does not exist because this material is not yet activated. It will only be activated on the 15th when a specific transaction is executed. Okay, so once the material is created, sometimes you want to change the data so in the future or at any time when you want to change the data, then the change can also be carried out in two ways. Either you can do it for immediate change or you can schedule changes for a material. First one we'll see immediate changes and then zero two. Enter the material number. Select the views where you want to make the change into the plan, store location for which the changes have to be made and make the necessary changes. Whatever change you want to make, make those changes and the effect would be immediately updated. The changes will be immediately done. So here I'm going to change the purchasing value key. Now I can change any fields data except for the valuation price for the current date. In MM02, I cannot change the valuation price for immediate change. I can use the future price to make the future price change effective to the next day, not for today, not for the current date. Okay. 
Now, what if I want to make the price, the valuation price change for immediate date? And for that, we use the transaction code MR21. Enter the current date, the company code, the plan, specify. Okay, if this is the error that you're getting, just give me one moment, please. There was a slight issue in the configuration because of which we could not do that. Now that I've corrected it, we'll go back to MR21. In the real time, you'll not have any such issues. So when I press enter, I get to see the screen. I enter the material number. If I remember the valuation price, I can simply enter the new valuation price. If I don't remember, then you can just press enter and it will show me the current valuation price. And you just enter the new valuation price and save it. The price will be automatically updated in the material master. If you want to schedule the changes, you go to MM12, enter the material number, specify the date on which you want the changes to be scheduled to be changed. Now the past date, you have to give a future date. Select the views where you want the changes to be done. Let's say I take a different material here and enter the plant store location. For now, just leave this valuation type field blank. I'll cover this concept later and make the necessary changes to be scheduled for a future data change. I'm just going to make some entries and then changes. Again, here also the price cannot be scheduled for a future date because you already have this field, right? You can't save. Now you get the message data will be scheduled for 13th. Now, on the 13th or any time before the 13th, if you want to activate those changes, then you have to execute this transaction and then 13th to activate the changes. Now, remember whether you are activate you want if you want to activate it before the schedule date then you are going to execute it as and when you require those data to be activated that is if i want those data to be activated right now changed right now then i'm going to execute mm 13 right now but give the date on which those changes are scheduled in the key date okay so I'll click on execute and whatever changes have been scheduled for this material on this date, all those changes will be immediately carried out. Now, how do I know what are the changes carried out? Go to MM04 to display the changes made to the material. So enter that material number and click on execute. So all the changes which have been made to this material since the time it was created, including the creation will be displayed. When I click on execute, I'll see the first entry to be the latest change and the last entry to be the first creation. When I double click on this first creation, it will show me the action as entry that is creation. So what was created? All this information was created by this user on this particular date. And if the data is specific to a particular plant, the relevant plant and store location will also be displayed. Okay. And the next change was done using MM02 is change. This change was executed using MM13. So what were the changes made? When I double click on it, it will show me action change, which is for these fields. These are the values changed. And if the chain is for a specific organizational unit, it will also show me that organizational data. Okay, so the, like this, for any material, you can keep track of all the changes that have been made 
right from the time it was created or you can use this from change date to specify a particular date from which you want to check the changes made. So double clicking on that entry will show me what was done. Again, action entry indicates creation or action, if in the action column you see a change, that means values for these fields were changed on this date by this user. So like this, each and every change will be tracked and updated in the database. Okay. Now, after using the material, if there are certain users need to be given access to only checking the data, they should not be allowed to make any changes, then they are given access to MM03, which is display the material master. So all the data here will be in display mode or non-editable mode. So this transaction is usually given to those users who are not authorized to make any changes, but they are authorized to check the data. Enter and exit. Okay. Certain times, once the material has been in use for a long time, there may be new variations of that material or new versions or a new model, and the client company wants to change over to that new model and once they change over and if it is successful the existing version of the existing model needs to be deleted from the system now for the end users they are given only the option to flag the material for deletion they cannot delete any material directly the reason is there is a lot of data already maintained for a material in the database so in case a material is deleted directly without checking whether existing data or pending activities are completed and the material is deleted then those pending activities cannot be completed because that number does not exist anymore in the database so for that reason the option given is only for flag the material for deletion save it the effect of this particular transaction is that once the flag the deletion flag is set is activated no new activities or new documents can be created for that material anywhere so all the locations where this material exists all the plans store location valuation types sites organizations warehouses everywhere new document creation will be not allowed but all the pending activities, all the documents which have already been created and pending for completion, this can still be carried out. So any deliveries which are supposed to be received from the vendor, any deliveries which are supposed to be delivered to the customers, any payments can still be carried out. The only thing is new documents cannot be created. So once all the pending activities are completed and the client still wants to complete it, uh, and really delete it from the system when the request will be sent to the support team the consultant who gets that request needs to ensure that they have no pending activities or open orders anything like that still pending for this material anywhere and once they ensure that everything is really closed request will be forwarded to the database team where they're going to delete it completely from the database. Now once the material is completely deleted from the database, the same material with exactly the same data cannot be created or brought back again. So that's the reason why the users have to go through all this process for flagging the material and then ensuring all the activities are completed and then forwarding it to the supporting population. Now in case the client decides to use the material again, all they need to do is come back to this transaction and uncheck it for removing the flag. So once the flag is removed, that material can now be used as a normal material and all the activities can be carried out for that material as usual. After some time, whenever you want to create the list of materials, see what how many materials are created, 
of what material type you use the transaction code mm60 to create the list of material so in this transaction the material number range or plant code can be entered one of these two fields is mandatory enter the relevant value click on execute and all the material within that range or all the material within those plants will be displayed for uh, as a standard report so the data that you can check in this report now this is a standard report if the client requires any additional fields or additional data we modify it we add it before it is activated so in this report you can see how many plants this material exists in what is the material description when was it last changed what is the material type the material group base unit of measure the purchasing group evaluation class valuation price and who created this material for the first time the sap username which created that material for the first time so like this all the data can be checked for all those material within that range now this is a interesting or a useful report to see the material type of any material in any plant okay so whenever you want to check the material type of all the materials in your plant all you need to do is just come to this transaction enter your plant code or the range of plants and click on execute now we created four material and all those material of are of ROH type and they exist only in one plant. Now I want to see in how many storage locations of this plant the material exists. So for that I use the transaction code MMSC not only to check in how many storage locations the material exists but also to extend the material to new storage locations within the plant by simply entering the storage location on this page. Save it the material can now be used in all those storage locations now please remember like i told you earlier the material has to be specifically created in each of the plants and storage locations where that material has to be used in case you enter a storage location or a plant in which the material is not yet created the system will give you an error saying that the material does not exist at that level so in case i want to use it in the second plant again because it is not yet created in the second plant it will not allow you to make any transactions so mmsc is used for extending the material to new storage locations in a plant where it is already created so like this all the plants all the material, the three material that we are going to use, I've extended it to all the storage locations. Now, to extend the material to a new plant, I'm going to use MN01. Enter the material number here without entering any other data, particularly the copy from. Don't enter anything here. Just enter the material number in the material field. Press enter. Industry sector and material type will be automatically displayed select the same five views for now enter the new plant here what will happen is since the material is already created it will directly take me to the purchasing view so if i try to select the basic data view it will not allow me to make any changes to the basic data view because the basic data contains information common to all the areas where this material is used and usually the data cannot be changed so enter the relevant purchasing data then once you enter the purchasing data for this plant press enter it will take you to the plant data storage one enter the plant and storage location specific data here and purchasing data is again specific to each plant so enter all the purchasing related data so like this each material again extended to the second plant So the values that I'm entering here, as you may have already understood, are just random values. They have no real value or no real connection to the real time. Yeah. 
but this is how you're going to create and maintain the data for any material even in the real time right so once it is done now use MMSC to extend the material to other story locations in this second plant also all I need to do is just enter the new story locations here and save it so like this all the end user activities can be carried out by using the transaction course or if you want to use the path then you can use SAP menu for the easy access SAP menu logistics materials management material master material create change flag for deletion display display changes or you can use other to extend the story locations right in this way the material that we created can be extended to any material any plant or any store location where it has to be used so this is the end of some of the major end user activities for the material master next we're going to talk about the configuration of material master hello everyone so in this session we're going to start the configuration of material master now material master whenever we create a material after entering the material type and industry sector we get to see the list of views which can be out of which the relevant views can be selected so the first configuration that we're going to talk about is how to maintain that combination of views and in each view how to specify the combination of subscreens so this element subscreen sequence is used for maintaining the combination of views and subscreens for each criteria for each combination of criteria these criteria are username that is the sap username the transaction code material type and industry sector so you can use any one or a combination of these criteria for creating and assigning the screen sequence so basically username will be used when the client requires a specific set of views only to be available for specific users for instance people in the sales department need to access only the basic data and some the sales data and not any other type of data similarly purchasing department employees may be restricted to only basic data and purchasing data so we use the username combination username criteria to create the screen sequence containing only those combinations of views and subscreens and assign when we assign it to that user then when that user logs in he will be restricted to only those views right so like this based on any of these criteria we can create a screen sequence and assign it so that when that specific criteria or the condition is met the relevant combination of views and subscreens are available for use now since the screen sequence should contain only those views and subscreens the standard sap system comes with certain predefined views uh, predefined screen sequences which can be used for creating a new screen sequence so the standard screen sequence which contains all the views and subscreens as defined by sap is 21 now each screen sequence is identified by a uh, two character alphanumeric code whereas the criteria are identified with a one to four character code called screen reference okay so we use the standard screen sequence 21 copy it to create a new screen sequence which will contain all the views and subscreens as required for that criteria create a code for that criteria called screen reference and use the combination of screen references to assign that screen sequence so that when that condition is met the relevant screen sequence gets triggered so let's see how to create and assign a new screen sequence let me log into the server Just one moment 
since all the configuration activities happen in the ING screen, so we go to SPRO ING. Now we go to Logistics General, Material Master, configuring the Material Master. First step would be to define the screen sequence. So we use the option define structure of data screens for each screen sequence. Click on execute. And you'll see a list of all the screen sequences already maintained in this system. Just taking a little bit more time than expected, just need to wait. So once it displays the list of all the screen sequences, select the standard screen sequence, which is 21. Click on copy as and enter a new code starting with the letter Y or Z. And it has to start with Y or Z and the description here for practice, I'm just entering screen sequence one, but in the real time, please ensure that you clearly identify for what purpose you're creating this screen sequence. So if you're creating it for the combination of raw material and mechanical engineering industry sector, view the description as such, ROH in mechanical engineering industry sector. So that later on, once you start working, once you start Doing other things, you may forget what you have, why you have created a screen sequence. So this description will clearly specify for what reason you have created it, right? Now the reason why it should start with Y or Z is because there are a lot of, uh, there are a few predefined screen sequences. So to differentiate user-specific screen sequence from the predefined list, we use the letter Y or Z. So any screen sequence starting with the letter Y or Z, the consultants will understand that it is created as per the client requirement and normally will not be changing that. So once it is copied, once you get the copy confirmation, select that screen sequence, double click on data screens, and it will show me the list of all the views which are available for selection. You get to see a total of 68 views. Now each of these views is identified by a screen number. This is the screen sequence, screen number, the description, screen control, which manages how the display will look, the maintenance status, indicating what type of data is maintained in that view, GUI status, the kind of interaction, the GraphQL user interface screen, and the alternate description. Now, the system will be able to, the application will be able to identify whether it's a main data screen or additional data screen by using this maintenance status column. If you see only one or two entries here, then the screen is a main data screen. However, if you see a lot of entries like this, then that view is a additional data screen because the values in the additional data screen should be common for all the views. That is why the maintenance status column will have almost all the view list. Okay. So if you don't want, obviously we don't want to maintain all the 68. So select those views that we don't want and delete them. So the way to delete it is just selecting the views that you have, that you are going to keep and deselecting those that you want to maintain. Okay. You can also select the additional data screens here. So all those views that I have deselected, they are the ones that I'm going to keep. All those that are selected, I'm going to delete. And make sure that you are making the changes in the screen sequence that you have created. Do not make any changes to the standard screen sequence 21, either in practice or in the real time. Okay. So once it makes the changes, you get the message, number of dependent entries deleted, it means it's done. So now I'm left with only 18 views, 
okay select a view double click on subscreens to see the list of subscreens click on view data screen and it will display the complete screen as designed by sop so here i have material description general data material authorization dimensions competitor packaging and basic data text which are a total of seven subscreens but if i look at the list i see there are a total of 10 subscreens so this is the screen sequence screen number that is the data screen number the order number in which the subscreens are going to appear and the screen number of the subscreen so when i look at this at the bottom i have three subscreens with the same number when i select a subscreen and click on view subscreen it shows me just a blank screen almost every view will have at least one blank screen so that in case any additional data has to be displayed in the view i can use the blank screen to add that field in an additional subscreen okay so like i said almost every view will have at least one subscreen now if i don't want all the subscreens in fact during practice i'm only entering material description general data and dimension so I'm not use since i'm not using the other subscreens i can as well delete them so select the first subscreen view subscreen it will show me what it is deselect go to the next one it will this also i require deselect go to the next one if you don't want this subscreen all you need to do is just delete it so like this when i delete it will automatically remove that subscreen so select the next one click on view subscreen you don't want that delete it so when i'm deleting it it is not changing the total number of subscreens the 10 numbers is still the same the reason is the total number of subscreens cannot be reduced using this screen for that you need to go back to the data screen list and use the screen control column and change the value to select less number of subscreens so when i select this one 4000 then the total number of subscreens available in this view are going to be reduced to six right and if you want to change the order of the subscreens let's say i want the general data to be the first subscreen then material description then dimensions then you can use these select that view use these buttons to move the subscreen up or down now even though we have selected only one line when you if you still get this message you save the data exit the transaction and then execute it again because sometimes the system will still uh, in the back end have selected a line so in order to deselect it just exit the transaction completely and execute the transaction so that way all the selections will be deselected so when you execute go back and select your view and make the necessary changes i'm just waiting again for the application to complete its transaction And then once the view says select display, select the view, go to the data screen, select the data screen, double click on views, select the subscreen, move it up or down. So when I move it, it's going to change. Now when I look at the data screen, I have general data, material and dimensions. So whatever is the order required by the client, I can move the subscreens around. But when I want to move, maintain the order of the main data screens, I do not have an option to change the order here. Okay, for that, once the screen sequence is completed, all the screen sequence are created and their relevant views and subscreens are selected, exit the transaction, go back to the IMG screen. Now you go to maintain order of main and additional screens, execute, double click on the, your relevant screen sequence 
and here you maintain the order so instead of the order being 1 2 3 4 here the order numbers are 10 20 30 so select the order in which the views have to be displayed and this to be the third fourth fifth and I want this to be the sixth one and this one to be the seven and eight and then I want MRP to be nine ten eleven and twelve. So we selected main twelve main screens, so all the twelve have been maintained in the order. Now that I have created the screen sequence and maintained the order of main and additional screens and also the subscreens, now I need to assign it to my criteria. So I go to assign screen sequences, click on execute. Now in order to assign to these criteria, I need to first create the screen reference to code for each of the criteria. So on the left, I have the options for creating the screen references. Double click on material type screen reference go to the material type which is ROH we go to ROH and give a one to four character alpha numeric code let's say I'm just going to give VGR similarly double click on industry sector screen reference and assign a new code for the mechanical engineering industry sector ensure that the code that you want to assign is not already created in the system once you have assigned a code, click on save. Now go to screen sequence control, click on new entries. Transaction screen reference is 01. User screen reference, specify star that is any user. Material type screen reference, VGR. Industry screen reference is V. Screen sequence is YB. The effect of this is what I've just done is any user using any transaction code if they access material type identified by the screen reference in the industry sector identified by the screen reference the combination of views and such screens to be defined is identified by the screen sequence once you enter it and press enter you have to get this message one entry chosen at the bottom if you even get a warning message, warning messages here are also equivalent to error messages. It simply indicates the combination of criteria and the screen sequence you have entered is not accepted by the system. But if you get this message one entry chosen, it means the combination of criteria and the screen sequence you have entered is accepted. Now before I save it, let's see what is the standard sequence and what is the effect of this change. So let me open the material. And I'm going to change it here. Display the change material screen. Enter one of the material that we created. Now I get to see the standard, so the order is also Basic data one, basic data two, purchasing, foreign trade, order types, and then we can data when we have store location, stock plan, stock WM, all these are there. So now let's save the changes. We just made the data is saved. Now I go back to the same screen, execute the transaction again so that the changes are activated. Select now when I press enter, I get only the shortened list, right? And they are in the order in which I have maintained it. And the additional screens which were available earlier are not getting displayed because my screen sequence does not include all those additional views, right? When I select basic data and check the basic data, again it only shows me three subscreens as created in my screen sequence. Yay. So this is how I create and assign a screen sequence for any type of activity. Now the criteria can be anything 
that you require that the client requires. So you can create as many screen sequences and assign it for a particular combination. One very important thing to remember during the assignment is this first row, which shows 0, 1, star, 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 and the standard screen sequence 21. This entry should be always displayed on the screen. Okay, that means you should not be making any changes to this first row data, nor should you be deleting it. Whether it is in practice or in the real time, this entry should always be there. Now, in case for any reason this entry is not there, the system will not allow you to carry out any material related, material master related transactions. You will not be allowed to create, change, display anything. And without material changes or anything, you cannot obviously carry out transactions with the latest data. So that means it will not allow you to make any changes. Now, if it is changed or if it is deleted for any reason and you try to add it back, system will not allow you to add it back. The only solution would be to reinstall SAP. And that's not a small thing, as you can understand. Okay, so please be careful when you're creating. Don't make any creating a screen sequence. Don't make any changes to the standard screen sequence. And when you're assigning, do not make any changes to the first row. The first row should always be there. Okay.